Now, with rising interest rates and fear of the housing market falling, what are some opportunities right now? Let's talk about recession proofing your investments. Now, there is a rare opportunity right now where you can get a mortgage interest rate that's lower than a regular residential rental property and a much longer amortization, which means more cash flow and is recession proof. So let's talk about this with Dahlia, CEO of Streetwise Mortgages and go into the ABCs of this investment opportunity. Hello, Dahlia. You have brought up an amazing, super interesting topic, which is potentially getting a multifamily is easier right now than a residential property because there are different ways you can get a longer term. You can have as little as a 5% down payment. There is so much we need to unpack. So let's get into it. Okay. First of all, why would even people consider going into multifamily versus residential at this point? So multifamily starts at five units or more, Tracy. And when you have more units, you have the opportunity to generate better cash flow, also hire people to help you manage the property. And of course, the cost of money is a big part of why the numbers look good right now on multifamily compared to residential. Believe it or not, the financing is cheaper. The rates with lenders who use CMHC, and we're going to talk about that, are at around 4.5%. And amortizations could be longer. Above the 30-year end, you can typically get on residential. You mentioned CMHC. That's where, I, I'm going to just simplify, it's like the Canadian housing market the agency, they get involved and they apply an assurance policy against the mortgage. So you're paying... a a little bit more on the mortgage. So what would that be? Like, say if you had a million dollar multifamily unit, five units, and you just said it has a longer amortization. So what, 40 years, 50 years, what would be the premium on a million dollar property from CMHC? Okay, so I, I, I'm i going to just clarify one thing on CMHC. Think about it exactly the same way as when you purchase your first home. You put less than 20% down and they added this premium to your loan in and every master just making a slightly higher payment over the, the period, right? So the premium is determined based on a couple of things. How far is the loan to value? So if you're getting a million dollar property and you're, the property is qualifying for a CMHC loan under the regular program at 85%, the premium is going to be different compared to 95% compared to 65%. And if you go to the CMC multifamily insurance premium website, you will see what these bands are. And they can go up to 4 or 5% sometimes. A typical amortization on a multifamily is 25 years, but with CMC, you can go 30, 35, 40 under the regular program and under a new program that they launched. About a year ago, called the MLI Select, you can go up to 50. So as you increase the amortization, they add a small premium as well. Right. But you're financed over a longer term. So it pays off, right? It pays off. Okay. So let's get back, back to the basics. So how does someone go about that? Do, how do they know that they can qualify and what kind of budget would they have? So here's the cool thing about multifamily. Lenders look at it as if it's a business. They're actually looking for that business to qualify for the loan. So what are they going to look at? They're going to look at the business income, which is rents from all the units. If you're getting to charge, if you're charging for laundry, if you're charging for parking, if you're charging for storage, that's the rent. And then they take vacancies and then they deduct expenses, taxes, insurance, you know, property management. And that becomes the, what's called the net operating income that they have to see if it's qualifying for the loan. On the recession side, lenders typically look at you. They say, okay, Tracy, how much income do you make? How much debt do you carry? That is not the case here, which is why multifamily is, is, is cool in that sense. I have investors who qualify for multifamily and they're not working because it's the building that's qualified. Now, there is a technical term that I'm going to put out here called the debt coverage ratio, which is the building's ability to carry the debt. I have a calculator for this. I have a one hour video that explains this and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll share the link. You look at the building's income, you look at the building's expense, 
you plug it into the calculator. The lenders use their own ways of looking at vacancies and property management. And then that determines how much loan the building will qualify for. So if you're buying something for a million and the calculator says this building qualifies for $900,000 loan, then the difference obviously is going to be your down payment. Okay. You as an investor should look at that building, say the five unit plus building as a business that generates you cash flow. So you got to run the numbers. Doesn't make sense to even make that investment. Say, so cash flows, I don't know, like a couple hundred bucks a month per unit comes into your pocket after all expenses. And then you would go to say your firm, Dali, and just say, okay, well, I'm interested in getting this five unit multiplex for a million. And then at that point, then you would run the numbers and check, okay, does, does the building generate enough income and do all the checks and balances like as if the bank was about to loan you money to see if you qualify. So typically what kind of down payments would the person need to have ranging? I know you said as little as 5%. What is more of the common metric? The common metric is 25% down. That's okay. the metric. The 5%. So if we're going to a traditional bank, you know, 25%. If we're going to take a loan that is protected or insured by CMC, that number starts to go down and it can go, you know, as low as that 5% down that we're talking about. So Tracy, here's often what happens, you know, clients are, they're either working with a realtor or they're on bus and they see a five units or a six units or a bigger apartment building and they get a sheet that says, here is the cash flow. What do you do from there, right? So it's the realtor's view of how this building is going to perform. So if you as an investor want to know how much down payment do you need, what you need to do is re reach out to us, okay? We'll help you. We'll help you understand, okay, how is the lender going to look at this? How do we use a calculator? And then we'll help you determine the down payment because here's what tends to happen. You may have a building on the MLS that says that this building was fully occupied. But the lender is going to say, oh, you know what? In reality, we need to use 5% vacancy. So as we work with you, we'll help you understand how the lenders look at things. And then it's going to become second nature to you. So look at something and you go, okay, you know what? I know I'm going to use this for my reserves and it's going to be this much down payment. So that's the first step. Say, say you went through that. And then what are all the extra things that comes with the multifamily? You know, it's a business. You need a property manager, especially if it's like a couple hours away. But what, what are other things that people need to know about getting a commercial property? From a financing standpoint, there are more costs involved in getting a mortgage on a multifamily. What are they? Appraisal is going to be more expensive. It's not going to be your $300 appraisal on a house. It's going to be more in the $3,000 calendar to do an appraisal. Some lenders may require what's called an environmental assessment. So this is basically a test that an engineer will come and do to make sure that the site, the property is located on is clean. And is it required for everything? Absolutely not. Like typically it's for anything seven units or more with some lenders or if the loan amount is greater than a million. Uh, but generally they, they say, okay, is this property close to a gas station? Is it on a site where there was a laundry facility? And if the answer is yes, definitely one is needed. If the answer is no, then every lender is different. But that's a cost to you. If we're going to see you, see you, you will charge $150 per door to review a file. All right. And then in the commercial space, lenders charge a fee, brokers charge a fee, where in the residential space, there is, you rarely hear about that. So these are, there are extra costs for you as an investor if you're moving forward with it. The other thing you need to plan for is process-wise, things are longer. You go buy a house and you get your approval in five days, if not less. In commercial, the lenders issue something called the letter of interest once they see the pre preliminary numbers. But once they have all documents at hand, they can issue that final approval and it takes like two or three weeks sometimes to issue a final approval. So you have to plan for a longer approval and a longer closing. And we guide you through, you know, what you need to put in your offer to make sure you're protected and, you know, you're you know, factoring it for all of these timelines and any costs. So these are the two, two things. Two key okay. things. So what I just heard was you got to probably have more capital available, meaning 
to cover the appraisal, which is around three grand ish, depending obviously the, the building size. Then the other part is the environmental site assessment, which is called a phase one. And just a side note, I actually used to do that back in the day when I started out as an, an engineer. That could range like a few thousand dollars if that if the bank actually asks you to actually do that against the property. But like you said, the property typically would have a seven units or more. And you would know if sometimes they would look at history and they'll say, oh, was there a dry cleaner there within the last 30 years? And that would trigger that would trigger the phase one for sure because back then they had really bad practices <laughs> then. And then, and also you wouldn't want to inherit a contaminated site because that's just a horrendous nightmare because I used to clean those sites up. And then, and then the third piece is the timeline where it is much more extended. So not only if you were to do an environmental site assessment, that that could take, you know, a month or, or a few weeks. And then, and then, then there's the, the due diligence. I mean, they could all happen concurrently, but it's an extended timeline for a commercial property. So you can't expect to put a down payment and they close within a week or two weeks. Like that doesn't happen with, with commercial properties. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then I guess a big question from like naturally would be, has this, where does this work? Has it worked? You are, you are located near Toronto, probably the most, one of the most expensive areas in all of Canada. Are you seeing properties that even work there? So we're located in Vaughan, but we operate across Ontario and in five other provinces. So I get to see deals from all over. And here's the answer to your question. If you're close to a major center, if you're close to a major center like Toronto, what you're going to find out is that the units are selling at a higher price compared to the net operating income of the property. What does that mean? It means that if you're looking for the maximum loan, for, you know, relative to the purchase price, let's say you're buying for a million and you're looking for this big loan. In a major center, it is hard because the value is here and the income is here. And as I mentioned earlier, it's the income you know, that drives how much loan you're going to get. As you go further away, that changes because the units become cheaper. Uh, some investors still buy in major centers and they initially don't get a big loan, but what they do to the building is they increase the net operating income through renovations. And by doing so, after it's, after it's here, now they can go and get this big loan with CNBC. So, for you as an investor, it depends on your strategy. When you're starting out in multifamily, I would say start with something that is turnkey. And the turnkey means that you're going to have to go into the smaller markets, the Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, for example, the Londons, the Brantfords, and, and even further sometimes, not the Torontos of the world. And as you become more comfortable with the strategy, you may go into more major markets and start to do things with renovations and things like that. Yes, that's the model that I love doing because yes yeah, you get to force force appreciate the property and then and then get your basically your down payment back later and the unit doesn't cost you nearly as much but with that strategy about qualifying for the property i like that perspective where is the the rental income being the net operating income after all those expenses is actually what gives it the market value so something to just keep in mind as a real estate investors or aspiring real estate investors, if you get into a commercial property, five units or more, the way the building is marketed and, and valued is based on the income, not based on, okay, like, you know, the trends of the real estate market. It literally is just based on the income. There's a multiplier that's involved and then boom. So over time, the way your property makes more money is you've got to increase the rental income over time, then your property is worth more over time. And it could be, it's a much more, what's the word, linear effect than having to worry so much about, okay, is the housing market crashing because it's, it's deemed a business at that point. Is that fair to say, Dahlia? 100%. That's one of the biggest advantages right there, Tracy. You have more control over the performance of the building versus the neighbor selling at X and the house next door sold at Y. So you'll have, through increasing the now operating income, more control over the value versus looking at the comparables in the residential space to determine value. So big advantage. One more thing I want to make everyone aware of is 
there is a gray area uh, with multi-family. So this gray zone, Tracy, is only for five and six units properties. With some lenders, they can help you get a mortgage under the residential guidelines. Let's say you're buying something that is vacant. If you take it to commercial financing, because it's vacant, there is zero income, and therefore there's going to be zero mortgage on the side. If we go residential, well, these lenders who were considered in residential, they're going to look at your personal income, your personal debts, and if you qualify, you can still acquire a typical 20% down to your amortization and get a residential rate. This is not applicable on seven plus units, but five and six. Um, so the strategy is like if you, as a real estate investor, were looking at a vacant property or property that has a few units are vacant, under under seven, between five and six, and you're like wanting to qualify for mortgage and you want to do some renovations, but you're having a hard time, you're saying that obviously speaking to your team, there could be some financial institutions that would lend you a mortgage and then which then you as a real estate investor could do whatever you need to do to the property, force appreciate it, and then afterwards, then qualify for a bigger mortgage later on. But at least you got the mortgage in the beginning because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get a mortgage. On the commercial side, you wouldn't be able to get, you'll have to probably get a private loan because the business is not generating. This is always interesting. I've been in this and you've been in this for so long, yet the rules keep changing and there's always different ways of accessing money to buy rental properties. And this is a cool way where five units or more at this point in time, the mortgage interest rates could be lower and you can have a longer amortization, which could make this strategy actually viable in many, many different cities. We will do probably deeper dive on more multifamily units. If there's a lot of interest in this video, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions about multifamily or you're in residential and you want to level up, just reach out info at streetwisemortgages.com. We actually have a complimentary planning framework called a level up where we would sit down with you and say, okay, what do you want to achieve in the world? Where are you right now geographically? What makes sense to tap into? How do the numbers play out? Where's the money going to come from? We're going to help you piece it together and we can help you crunch some numbers so that you get the gist of how it all looks. And then, you know, you'll hit the ground running sooner than you may think. Go to streetwisemortgages.com forward slash toolkit. This will give you a calculator to determine the down payment. I put together a one hour video explaining everything about how the lenders think and how to use it and the frequently asked questions. Now, multifamily units sounds a bit too complicated for you and you're looking for an opportunity to invest in real estate without lifting a finger. Well, check out this video up here where you can invest in real estate without having the hassles of managing a business.